Today it's Leica. They've announced the Q3. I'll talk about why that's exciting, what I love so much about its predecessor, the Q2 I've been carrying around for the last year. I'll highlight some accessories I think are just must-haves for that camera, as well as showcase the new setup video I've done for its firmware 5.0. Hey everyone, it's Hudson. Uh, I, I think given that I'm doing this whole video on Leica and I haven't done a Leica video in this channel's history where it's really specifically focused on Leica, I should reassure uh, all of the Nikon faithful out there that I'm not in any way junking or abandoning my Nikon Z9 or my C62 or the Z8 that is almost on the doorstep. Uh, I'll be doing setup video for that Z8 and I'll be going through a whole bunch of videos and continue with my work with Nikon as well as Canon and Sony and Fuji and all the other brands out there making interesting stuff. But this little Q2 has earned a really dear place in my heart over the last 11 months of using it. And I'm gonna talk about why, I'm gonna talk about what's exciting about its successor, the Q3, which is launching today as this video goes live. Uh, I'll talk about some accessories I think are just must-haves for those of you who have the Q2. As soon as the Q3 is in my hands, I'll start working with some accessories for that. Some of these will, will bridge no problem. Others, like the L-bracket grip, you might need a new version. I'll check it out. I'll let you know. Um, I'm going to go through some images that have just that, that showcase why this camera has become the one that I have with me all the time. I used to call that my cell phone, but now this little guy is with me 99% of the time because I love the images out of this lens. And it's attached to the most magnificent 48 megapixel sensor. The new one, the Q3 launching, should be 61 megapixels by all rumors. You know, I, I'm recording this before the launch event. Um, and it, it, this little camera marries a, a beautiful, fixed lens, a 28 millimeter 1.7 lens to a spectacular sensor with all of the elegance and simplicity of the manual controls you'd expect from a Leica with a whole bunch of modern technology like really great autofocus, even good autofocus tracking and eye detect autofocus in the newest firmware, as well as automatic exposure bracketing and a great light meter with all kinds of different light meter settings, a really, really refined menu structure and control system where Two function buttons are all you have on the camera, but they can very easily and quickly be flipped around to control 16 different functions from within the menu. Six user profiles that you can instantly jump into to have this camera be reacting in ways for different types of shooting situations, all easily accessible from a quick access menu. This, this is a well-designed little machine that has a lens that just will blow your mind as you work with it, particularly, well, actually at any aperture. It just creates beautiful, beautiful results. Um, and I'll jump in, actually maybe the best way for me to start this is looking at some images that just describe why I initially fell in love with this camera, why I was talking about it enough that it arrived in this used version as a birthday present for me last year, not very far from this time of year, and what I've been doing with it since. And then we'll jump in and we'll talk about some accessories I think you should have for it, uh, as well as some gripes I have about it that I'd love to see changed on the, on the Q3 and what I do know about the Q3 and what's exciting about that. So, oh, one little other highlight. You can just click right up here or you can run into this video's full description. You'll find links to this camera and the accessories that I talk about. Those links help me out and I appreciate it. Uh, but you'll also find a link to a brand new setup video or again, you know, if you're clicked up there, brand new set up video for firmware 5.0 on this camera. Um, I've had some people that are in my community purchase this camera and ask me for a setup video like I do for all my Nikons. I have done one, it goes through every aspect of the menu system, shows you how to set up those custom buttons, shows you how to set up the favorites menu, shows you how to set up profiles, and describes what each and every menu item in the camera is all about. So it's a good, long, comprehensive video with a table of contents that's linked and clickable, as well as a scroll table of contents across the bottom. Jump in, check that out. If you have a Q2, it'll tell you all about the settings. So let's take a look at some images, uh, and they tell the story of why I love this camera. All right, so I've just picked a couple of dozen pictures from the last 11 months that I've had this machine. And, and I have to start with, with 
the two women that were integral with me moving from my modern high-tech Nikons into having them plus this camera. And the first is Elizabeth Brooks, shown here with a friend of hers that she met in Bidler Forest in South Carolina this year. Um, Elizabeth brought two Q2s, the monochrome and the color version, on our workshop last year to Costa Rica. And in the process of the workshop, put them into my hands. And when I got the files home and I started looking through them and after the shooting experience with them, I just I kept talking about it with my beautiful wife, Stacy. So she's seen here in one of my early Q2 images about a week after I got the camera at a Krungbing concert uh, here, here in Portland. Uh, and she found one used for me and got it for me for my birthday. Uh, and I will just show you that, you know, the, the day I got the camera, I think it actually arrived a couple days after my birthday. You know, I was out playing with it on a beautiful day on my porch. This is my aunt Denise who lives with us. And, you know, you just look at this 48 megapixel sensor and how sharp what you want is and how beautifully blurred the background can be. You know, if we take a look here, this is shot at uh, F1. I'm pretty sure this is F1.7. I don't know why I don't have EXIF data in this one. Uh, my little girl Pepper shot at F1.7. And, you know, I just was looking through the images. I brought them into the, can the, the computer and I said, my goodness, like for a 28 millimeter lens that has such a beautiful wide version of the world, the way that the bokeh and the background falls off and how sharp everything else is and the color rendering in the standard profile. Here's Pike that first day I was shooting. Um, or maybe, yeah, the first day I was shooting. I, I started playing around with its little macro mode where you just spin a little dial on the back edge of where the lens meets the body and it pushes the lens out to focus closer. And I was blown away with the image quality using it in its macro mode. I handed it to Stacy uh, on the 4th of July while we were out playing around. And I just showed her how to focus and then Pepper came and laid on her belly and I love this image. Everyone I've handed the camera to, you give them a couple of words about how it works and boom, they're just off creating beautiful images. Not to mention, I love the way it creates black and white JPEGs. This is a black and white JPEG almost straight out of the camera. And you know, you look in here, you can see Stacy sitting up <laughs> in Pepper's eye, taking the picture of her. You know, it's an unobtrusive little machine. People don't feel intimidated looking into it, and yet it's such a magnificent imaging machine. You know, taking it out to our kite surfing beach and playing around with it. I thought, you know, well, how does this thing do with action? And while the autofocus feels a little janky, if you put it in its tracking mode, it does a pretty good job. I think I shot a series of maybe 14 frames as Pepper was running straight at me. And I think 12 of them were sharp and in focus, even though it felt like it might not be working. Taking it out at night with that 1.7 aperture, this is that night, that 4th of July night, you know, the ability to shoot uh, in almost no light, uh, just stop down to 1.7 and the beautiful way that it renders those out of focus details. And then the first workshop that I took it on, I believe was the Owens Valley. And here's, you know, David Archer, master photographer and workshop uh, assistant. And here he is at uh, a beautiful, beautiful morning at, uh, at Convict Lake up in the High Sierra. And just, you know, the way it renders people and the background, uh, you know, this one's shot at F16 and it's, uh, here it's got to load in. It's a little bit high. Well, actually it just looks great, doesn't it? I, I love the way that it works, uh, the background images of this. It looked a little grainy there for a second, but then once it resolved in, there's a little diffraction at F16, but man, oh man, it's pretty darn good for F16. You know, here's here's an, another view of just a landscape shot. I, we saw the sky was just going crazy as we were driving up at about 10,000 feet in the Bristlecone Pines. And I hopped out and I shot this bracketed three stops apart on the meter, three stops under, three stops over, blended them in Lightroom's HDR. This is clearly a print uh, proof of this particular image. Um, you know, you can also take it right to uh, 120 seconds of exposure just using the wheel. Once you put it at one second plus, if you're down in a low ISO like this is ISO 50, 
uh, you can take it to 120 seconds in camera. Um, I wish I wish you could do it at every ISO. That's one of my complaints we'll talk about in a minute. But 120 seconds in camera, not bad. Here's an image of my boy Pike in Baja, Mexico. I just love you know the way that it renders people, especially at f1.7, Stacy. Um, you know, th this is like going swimming with the family in this beautiful little lagoon in Baja on a day the wind wasn't blowing and we weren't kite surfing. And, you know, I would normally probably just take my phone on this trip, but the Leica fit just fine in our little family dry bag. We had to wait out to this beach. It's so small. It's so compact. Sure, your cell phone has a portrait mode that blurs the background, but you don't get results that are this beautiful. Taking it to Cuba, uh, we're, now we're last month, April of this year, uh, Rick and I out scouting around, getting ready for the workshop, meeting, you know, this is uh, one of the gals who served us coffees, our little cordelitos in the, in the El Perrada Cafe near the old cathedral in Havana. And I love, you know, people shine. They look into this camera. They don't see some big monster lens. They're more comfortable. Here's my good friend Chap Jackson photographing this trumpet player outside of his, his apartment in Havana. Um, and, and you can see Chap's working with the Q2 as well um, in darkness. You know, here we are, 3200 ISO in a cavern, one of the, the deepest caves in Cuba, one of the biggest cave systems. And this is the guide taking us through. And someone else hit him up with the headlamp and I was able to just snap focus on him and get that shadow up on the wall. You can see there's a little bit of graininess to it. I haven't even taken this through Lightroom's noise reduction, but I feel like it does a pretty darn good job. Just the ability, I love the way it renders black and white JPEGs um, and the way that you can view the world in black and white through its OLED viewfinder. It's JPEG rendering in black and white is so beautiful and you see that through the viewfinder. It lets you look at the world in just pure tone. Uh, and, and I've started doing that with my Nikon cameras in the wake of this, throwing them into monochrome and those bright, contrasty, middle-of-the-day scenes. The fact that you can just flip the shutter dial and instantly be into shutter priority mode and you know use auto ISO or you know throw the, throw the aperture into automatic and go full shutter priority mode. I tend to use manual with you know choosing the aperture, choosing the shutter speed, let the auto ISO float to keep the exposure right, keep an eye on it. But this is a 15th of a second cruising down the streets of Havana with some of the workshop crew in tow and other old convertibles. And I love that, being able to blur the background, get that motion blur on the car. Again, the HDR capture possibilities with this camera. This is handheld, and you can set it up to just instantly take bam, 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 three frames, one three stops over, one on the meter, one three stops under. If you want, you can take six frames, or five frames that way, six stops under, three stops under, on the meter, three stops over, six stops over, um, and just blend those to get these nice, natural-looking HDR images. This is all three of those images blended together. You know, and you'd think I brought in some light to fill, but I didn't. This is just straight HDR capture. Same thing. Here's the landscape itself in an HDR capture. And I just loved having it walking around the streets, capturing these kinds of scenes with this kind of detail. You know, this painting crew working on this house in a van and the woman looking up from the street, the old Dodge sitting outside. Um, it's really just a special little camera to have with you all the time and the image quality that you get out of it is just stunning there's so much croppability there's so much detail and the way that the out of focus rendering is in the frame the sharpness of what's in focus and the rendering of what's out of focus you know what are some accessories that i think are just must-haves personally for this camera um, i heard that uh, someone who went to one of the leica trainings at one of the leica stores uh, was told by by their pro that the only sound this camera really makes is the sound of the stock lens cap falling off and hitting the ground. It comes with this metal lens cap that just falls off, which is really sad for a camera as expensive as this is. I'll talk about some of my gripes about this camera in addition to its price, um, but that's kind of the Leica thing. This is an amazing lens. If you were to buy a Leica lens for the M camera uh, with this specs, it probably would cost almost as much as this camera and you get an auto-focusing system with an amazing sensor built in. Um, this rubber cap from Match, I'm putting a link to it in this video's description again, and it's up on my ATS link site. If you go to my website uh, and go to the links page, you'll find all the this camera plus all the accessories available for it that I think are must-haves. 
This cap stays on. It's a nice little rubber cap. It's easy to slap on there. It's easy to stick in your pocket. Easier to stick in your pocket than the metal one that comes with the camera. Um, I can't use it without this really right stuff L bracket. Right now they're the only game in town. It has this grip on one side. It has a nice L bracket to grab your lightweight tripod you might want to bring with this camera in the other. Um, so you can go horizontal, you can go vertical with a dovetail Arca Swiss plate uh, on the bottom and on the side. And in addition to that, it has a nice QD port to grab a sling strap like I love my Luma Labs. QD3 strap, boom, so you can have it at your side, pop it up and shoot, or you can cinch it up and carry it nice and tight on your body like it's not even there, it won't move around. And this is how I carry this camera. I love having the QD port on there, and that way you've got nothing dangling off this camera. The last thing I want is some strap dangling off or connectors to a strap. The first thing I do with the camera is pull the little, the little triangles off the, the mount points because I don't want anything clinking around, dangling, making sounds, catching the wind. I love the QD port possibilities of this. So the Luma Lab strap, I'm putting that in the link's description, the QD strap, as well as this really right stuff L bracket, which gives you a nice grip. I know a lot of people, because this camera without this L bracket, is a little slick to hold on to. They put a, a, a thumb grip in the flash uh, hot shoe. I'm not a big fan of that. I don't like the feel of it. I love this grip. I get my fingers around it. I can, I can walk. There's no way it's coming loose. I can hold it with two fingers if I want to. Um, and plus I get the QD port and everything's accessible from underneath. You know, I can get my battery out and switch it in a GIF. I can get my memory card out if I, it's, they, they built it well, all right? Plus it's got a, a, a quarter 20 um, thread if you want to thread something into it. It's a, it's a really good L bracket. Uh, spare battery, this one really feels brutal. Um, because it's so expensive. Um, it feels really overpriced. I know that Leica stuff's expensive. This battery feels very expensive, but you do, it is a good idea to have a spare, um, the, especially since the camera doesn't have a USB-C charging port. It looks like the Q3 will, which is nice, so that when it's in your bag, you can plug it into a power delivery capable battery brick and charge your battery in between shooting. Um, I like, having my 82 millimeter case uh, Revolution magnetic filters. The Revolution filters have even stronger magnetism than the old Wolverines. They have one filter thread on the front so you can put a pinch cap if you want or a traditional filter threaded in. And I use a 49 to 82 millimeter um, filter adapter, a magnetic filter adapter. And that way I can just thread the Leica hood off, thread that 82 adapter on. I have no fear of vignetting. I can stack. Um, so this is my, my uh, circular polarizer, which just spins on the magnetic um, adapter. And then in the kit, I've got my 3.6 three, my three, and 10 stop neutral density filters, which can stack or go on one at a time and live right here, ready to go, along with the metal cap. It's just easy peasy. Um, you could, if you don't have another camera system, see this works so well with all of my Nikon lenses. Um, if you don't have another filter system, you could go with a smaller filter size, even down to 52 for this since it's a 49. I would, I would keep it at 52 so you can stack filters without fear of vignetting. Um, but, and I can always custom order that if you're interested in a smaller filter kit. Just hit me up and I can get that stuff with one extra day lead time as my case uh, supplier is, is right here in Portland. So you can always click that link to go straight to case filters or run again to my ATS links page. I think that having a color checker for this camera, a gray card color checker, I like these, these um, data color, is it data color? No, Calibrite, X-Rite turned into Calibrite. Calibrite, Passport is really, really nice because you can do the full, you know, um, profiling color checker chart if you want to for the camera. And, or you can use this gray card. And when you watch my setup video, you'll see how easy it is to use the gray card feature of this camera to get a perfect white balance for your scene. It's literally a long button press, short button press, shoot. 
and you're in the perfect white balance with one of these in your pocket. Um, so those are sort of my, my high level accessories. There's also a small USB powered travel charger that's reasonable for these batteries, which is what I take with me on the road since the Leica charger is large and also expensive, you don't wanna lose it. Um, so leave that at home or in your studio and get that little travel charger. It's a USB, it's got its own USB core built in, it's like 60 bucks and it's small and lightweight, it takes a lot less room and space in your bag when you're traveling. What don't I love about the Q3, Q2? There aren't that many things on the list. I, I would put the fact that they were too concerned that someone would turn the ISO way up in bright daylight and set it at 120 second shutter speed. They limited how long you can have the shutter open based on how low the ISO is to protect the sensor from, from too much heat and damage. And I think it would have been nice for those of us who shoot at night if they'd had a setting inside where you could override that. You could do longer exposures on say a star tracker at night with the camera. I think the Q3 solves that to a certain extent by putting a traditional old fashioned shutter with a cable release threaded port on it. So I'll grab my old Linhoff 4x5 cable release and thread it into the new Q3 and then you can just override it and keep it open longer when it's on a star tracker or a thing like that. I think it'd be nice if they built it in. They do, if you're doing long exposures in bright daylight and you're at 50 ISO or 100 ISO, you can go all the way to 120th of a second. But if you ramp up to say 800 ISO where this camera would also perform really well to do stuff at night, it limits you to about 15 seconds. And so that was a little bit of a bummer for me to find out. There's no microphone input on this camera and it has beautiful 4K video. I'm not sure whether the Q3 is gonna do 8K video or 4K video. I think it would be great if it had a microphone import. I haven't heard that in the rumors. You can always do the beautiful video with this camera and have a little field recorder from Zoom or Tascam or someplace and leave the microphone on in this camera and just talk to it for a second and start both microphones together where they can both hear you and sync it up in post-production, but it's a pain. And you know, most cameras that you're gonna do any serious video work with have a microphone import to put a better microphone into service. Um, no USB-C charging. That seems to be addressed in the Q3 from all the rumors that I've read. So it'd be nice, you could stick it in the bag with a power delivery battery pack like the ones I recommend from Anchor and be charging the camera. If that's the case, I'll recommend those in the accessories when I, when I do the Q3 video and the Q3 setup video. The AFC, the autofocus continuous where it tracks subjects is a little bit jerky. I would never use it in video. You feel it kind of hunt and, and, and move in a not super smooth way. I think Leica doesn't have a long history with autofocus obviously. The autofocus is accurate. You know, when I track subjects with it, it doesn't feel like it's tracking subjects. It feels a little hinky, but when you get the images back, they're in focus. They're like shockingly in focus. Um, so, you know, I think that they executed well. I think it could just be a little smoother and I'm hoping to find that in the Q3 it's a little bit smoother, we'll see. Um, the back button autofocus, there is no back button autofocus. And, and I noticed on the Q3, it looks like there's two buttons. So maybe they added a back button that you could program for autofocus on the Q3. I'm hoping that's possible. I'd love it if you could remap this little digital zoom button, which I rarely use on the Q2 to do back button autofocus. That would be a huge request from me and firmware. You could turn that on in a menu. It, there's a menu setting for what this button does. And if you could have it be autofocus, and take it off of the shutter, that would be just amazing. The shutter works well, the autofocus is quick, it's accurate. Um, for most of the time that I use this, I don't, I don't fire bursts with it very often, and, and I find that I, having it on the shutter is not a big pain. You know, I get the, get the autofocus where I want, bap, you take your single shot. That's kind of how I mostly use this camera. Couple of gripes that I've heard from a lot of people that I haven't felt as much for myself. Uh, not having a tilt-out screen for low-level shooting and high-level shooting to look at the screen. I love this viewfinder and I rarely find myself doing that. Um, the back display is great. I see the Q3 looks like it has that, so that one's addressed in the Q3. The Q3 is 61 megapixel sensor I'm excited to test out and I'm, and I'm excited to see how this lens or if it's an updated lens in any way performs on that, on that huge megapixel sensor. It gives you even more cropability. Uh, HDMI out, it has no HDMI out. 
it's more of a pain for people like me that do YouTube videos where we want to show you the settings and the menus and all those kinds of things and what it's like to work with the camera. You know, I can only do that by recording the back LCD of the camera while I'm working with it. I can't show you what I'm seeing through the viewfinder. I can't project the menu structure when I'm doing my setup videos. And you know, those are, that's not all that many people need great HDMI out. I think Leica keeping it simple is a good thing. You know, I think that's, that's a gripe for, for a small niche group of people in which I am one of. So that's basically it. This camera has become the, the brother camera to all my Nikons and Nikon gear. Um, it, it is in many ways like a cell phone with just Herculean quality. It is so good. It sensors so great. Its lens is so great. Every aperture is wonderful. You can shoot it in, 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 in zone uh, autofocus where you just, you've got a nice gauge on the top. Say you're shooting at f11, you just set the infinity symbol at f11 and you've got everything from infinity to as close as possible in focus. And I shoot in the landscape like that all the time with this camera. Um, it's fantastic. A wish list I'd love to see in the Q3 would be automated focus uh, shift shooting like we've got with Nikon where I can say what's the closest thing and have it automatically shift focus through the scene. We'll see if that comes or not. That's, that's probably not there, but it's something I could see Leica adding in firmware. I will say that Leica has been really responsive to their customer base with firmware. You know, they just, right before the Q3 launched, added eye detect autofocus to the Q2, which I think is awesome. That's the kind of thing Nikon does a ton of. You know, they added focus shift shooting to cameras that didn't have it in the past. They've updated autofocus systems as much as they can in the Z6 and Z6 II and Z7 and Z7 II. Um, they're constantly kind of updating things. I remember them giving uh, uh, save autofocus position to the older cameras when it came in the new cameras. They gave um, low light autofocus upgrades, all kinds of stuff. And Leica seems to be the same way and I really, really appreciate that. Not all the brands do that and I say bravo. Um, so I'll get the Q3 in my hands. Next video I'll let you know what's different, what I love, what I don't. And I'll do another full setup video for the Q3. Again, there's a full setup video for the Q2 already up and live. You can, I linked it earlier here. You can also find it in this video's full description. It's here on YouTube, so check it out. If you've got a Q2, you might learn a thing or two or at least get some ideas from how I set up mine. I don't think it's like the guide for everyone to set their camera up identically, but it's to explain how I've approached it and maybe have you learn how you might wanna set it up similarly or differently, but understand how all of the different amazing high-tech stuff in this camera works. I love this thing, I can't be without it. I think for a lot of you out there, if it's in your price range and you don't have one, you should rent one and check it out. And I, I have a feeling it would be very hard for you to not to have it after a couple of weeks with it. That's been my experience and a bunch of other people I know's experience as well. Thank you, Elizabeth, for pushing me to get one of these. Thank you, Stacy, for getting it for me. To everybody out there, I hope you enjoyed. I uh, hope you're staying safe, staying creative. Uh, sign up for the next office hours that we have. We're doing an office hours on June 13th, and we're gonna be talking about gear from any brand. We'll talk about the Q3, we'll talk about the Nikon Z8, we'll talk about any other gear questions that you have. There's a lot of cool new stuff coming out. So sign up for that. It's a big free get together on June 13th, 10 a.m. Pacific. You can sign up right here, uh, or just go over to hudsonhenry.com slash office hours and sign up there. Leave us a question when you sign up. We'll be doing a lot of Q&A. All right, everybody. See you next week.